everybody, it's Adam Duff once again, and uh, we have part five of Demons. Uh, just to warn you ahead of time, I've got uh, my little kids are sleeping and my wife's got a bit of a cold, so you might hear some coughing and stuff, just for, you know, to, just to add to the mood, add some ambiance. Um, that being said, uh, just as a quick reminder, I have a brand new awesome site up. It's You can check out adamduff.com. I'm going to link it in the description below. Um, and it's I'm updating new videos all the time. You can subscribe uh, uh, to the page if you want updates on new videos and uh, relevant art content. I'm not going to be spamming you with uh, stuff all the time and no marketing jargon or anything like that. It's only uh, stuff that's relevant to you, stuff that you can benefit from. So uh, what we're doing right now, as you can see, as I mentioned in the earlier videos, I'm, uh, I decided to extract the characters and really make it a character development uh, piece at this point, which is cool because it also allowed me to have something open-ended so I could keep developing new characters. Uh, what's cool is I have tons of new characters and even new themes for characters um, all lined up like a machine gun. I'm going to be... I'm gonna be um, updating with new videos very regular, so it's going to be really exciting. Um, and as you can see, I'm uh, pushing the design for anguish. Uh, essentially, what I had mentioned before, I want to really give them that, that I want to really accentuate that sense of pain, right? That sense of pain that uh, associated with, you know, all the nerve endings being ta being attacked at the same time down the back and the neck and and the top of the head and stuff like that. I wanted to accentuate that feeling and add a little bit of refinement overall. Okay, you'll notice at this at this point that I'm also um, very focused on placement of each one of these spikes for the sake of design. I want to create a very clean silhouette, and I'm very conscious of things like tangents and balance as far as the length and uh, the, the length and the strength of the spikes on either side, while at the same time trying to keep it random, right? I, I want it to feel like there he, he wasn't carefully, you know, measuring out each piece and blah, blah, blah. I want to make it look like he just grabbed shards of, shards of metal and just jabbed them into his back, right? But you'll notice, for instance, that I'm creating, trying to create a nice fan effect across his back, just for aesthetic purposes, you know, to create something that has a nicer rhythm to it. Uh, rhythm is very important, um, but a slightly random rhythm. They're not perfectly spaced apart. There's a slight deviation in the way they're spaced between one and the other. In the case of the one on the right that you're looking at right now, you notice it was I had very carefully placed it. I extended it so that it went beyond the stick, so that it wasn't uh, hiding behind. I found it kind of created a weird illusion with depth. It helps with... Um, helps with the depth of the character. Um, and this, of course, is stuff that applies equally to landscapes. Is it the same rules apply to painting landscapes or, um, you know, doing fine art painting or doing character design like this? The same rules apply. So, like, if I have, if I'm creating tangents with foreground and background elements, it'll flatten the scene. Well, if I have tangents with foreground and background elements on my character, like objects that are placed behind other objects, then it can flatten my character, right? So as you can see here, I'm, as, I, as I'm up at the top, I have longer spikes. And as we travel around the side, they slowly get shorter and shorter. Kind of the same way you'd imagine quills on the back of a porcupine or, uh, you know, or some kind of even a design on a vehicle or something like that. All of these things can apply, right? It makes it look a little bit more deliberate. Um, and it gives it... it kind of accentuates the roundness of his back, the, that round form across his back. It kind of creates a bit of a subliminal extension to it. Um, you'll notice that I have ones that are further closer up on his shoulders, ones that are around the, the rounded form facing us so we can see how the entry points. And then I continue that off in the back. And our eyes can fill in the gaps. We, if we understand a few of them in the front and how they how they like how they insert into the body then as we see the ones in the back we our brain can assume that it's following that same pattern that same entry point right so that's basically what i'm doing right now pay attention to the fact that i'm not um i'm making sure to leave a little bit of breathing space a little bit of negative space between his the tips of his ears and the spikes as well i don't want to create a tangent there um, if I am creating an overlap, I make sure that it's a very clear overlap. So the ones that are behind the ears are clearly behind the ears. They're not in an awkward spot, right? Notice as well that with, to give it that extra jagged feel to it, I'm kind of, I'm not creating just perfect, you know, triangular spikes. I'm, 
um, adding thicker and thinner areas. But anywhere where I'm um, anywhere where I'm creating uh, uh, edges, I'm making sure that those edges are sharp. You got, you have to imagine that it's not only something that would hurt if it pierces you, but imagine grabbing it with your hand and sliding your hand down the side of it. It would probably slice open your hand as well. So I really want to create forms that are very, very painful looking to the touch. From a design perspective, elements like this are very important. It's funny, I was just actually discussing this in class with my students at, at college. Um, just uh, went on a converse, we had a conversation about design and stuff like that because they're designing posters, film posters. It's really fun stuff. And uh, what I was describing to them is um, it's very important whenever you're creating any kind of a character, environment, poster, vehicle, uh, anything, anything that you're designing. The word design is extremely important. The types of lines, how you space things apart, the lengths of things, every line has a feeling, every form has a feeling, right? For instance, if I gave these, if I made these spikes, if I gave them rounded edges, it would make them soft. It would make them child safe, for instance. And that's not the feeling that I want to give it. I want, I want his silhouette to be a painful silhouette and all of the forms that I integrated his ears the point to his ears the the shape of his nose the shape of his teeth the lines in his cheeks uh, all of those things his fingernails even down to the way he bends his fingers you notice how I he's he's holding with his fingertips with his claws more than his hand right accentuating those knuckles and what that does is it it all plays into that same design feel, right? And that's extremely important. By simply changing certain elements in, in this design to give it a slightly different feel, I'm ultimately changing the design. And it's important whenever you're designing things, whenever you're thinking in terms of graphic design in an image, that you're remaining consistent throughout your entire design, right? I don't want to create certain forms that are sharp and sharp and threatening and in other cases creating something that's more square or something that's more you know uh, rounded because you're always going to if it if it conflicts with everything going on then it feels to your audience as a poorly thought out design people are looking for consistency and people look for pattern people aren't going to look at him and expect to see an element of see an element of gentleness in him. There's nothing gentle about him. I want everything about him to be threatening, you know, right down to the tips of his fingers, to the tips of his, even the shape of his eyes, you know, it's the very piercing eyes, his gaze. I gave him, I made him ever so slightly cross-eyed uh, to give him a little bit of kind of a, a, a nuts look on his, make him look a little crazy, you know, all of that stuff. There's a very subtle suggestion of irises, but they're very dark and it's something you have to look up very close. But if you're looking for a, from a distance, they just look black, you know, like the devil's eyes type of thing. And all of these things play, you know, all of these things play into the whole design of this character. And when you think in terms of design and think about not only the, the actual line quality and the, the feeling of the line quality, but you're also thinking about um, the tempo of these things, you know, is it, there's a little, is there a little bit of randomness because he's a little crazy or is he more methodical? For instance, I could apply a very sharp, spiky design to a guy in a suit, right? If I wanted to create somebody who is, you know, uh, like a, a psycho businessman type of thing, right? But I might treat those lines a little bit differently. I might give them a slight, a, a thinner, smoother, elegant feel to it. I'm still creating a very threatening deviant character, but I'm giving a give me, giving him a little bit more height and making a, adding a little bit of elegance to his to his look, right? If he's a very um, if you're if you take that and you put it in the context of uh, an ogre or something like that or a dwarf, right? Dwarves will generally, if you look at the design of like Lord of the Rings. The dwarves have a very square design, very square, right angles, 45 degrees, blunt. They don't use thin shapes in dwarven design. Everything is very heavy and and bold, right? You compare that to the elves. Well, one race of elves, like if you think of the, the wood elves, the ones that live in the tall tree, everything is very tall and sinuous and curved, a lot of S-curves and C-curves. 
versus if you look in the hobbit the elves are a little bit different they're almost they almost lean a little bit towards human a little bit more generic so their forms aren't going to be there is going to be sinuous design but it's going to be blunted a little bit right and that's essentially exactly what the designers for lord of the rings what the concept artists uh, and designers at lord of the rings were were doing that's how they produce their designs something that you can very easily see if you're looking at uh, I have the uh, make the art of the Hobbit book next to me, and you can see it. it's very clear how they approach the design. That kind of stuff is um, an art in and of itself, and it's a lot of fun because it it helps you generate ideas. It helps you create. It helps you quickly figure out what works in your design and what doesn't, right? And uh, it's just an all-around very powerful tool. It's something that you can, you're going to get a lot out of, and it's something that that I strongly encourage everybody to like research a lot. You know, work work put a lot of work into it. Look it up, research it. Look at artists that have really um, unique design styles, because that's very often something that plays very uh, plays a lot into their um, particular you know their brand. Is if you were thinking of their art as their brand, right? That's how you would. Uh, that's how you'd be able to very often distinguish one person versus another because they have a tendency to lean towards lines and shapes that have a certain feeling versus others that do other things. And of course, that's always, or not always, but very often related to um, uh, the, their particular theme, the type of artwork that they do. Um, I was just talking with a friend of mine about uh, Anthony Jones, uh, an artist that I didn't follow that much. I, I'd seen his like a lot of his videos back, you know, years ago and stuff like that, and I'd seen a bit of his work. But I just recently, a friend of mine just reminded me of him, and I was like, shit, I really got to go check this guy out again because it's been a long time, you know. And I was watching the, um, uh, he had sent me the link for the uh, Level Up video, the uh, interview with him with painting demo and stuff. And uh, I'm going to, by the way, I'm going to link it if you check the uh, the links to interviews. I'm going to be linking it on my site tonight, so you can go and check it out whenever you get the chance. Uh, really good stuff. And, uh, I mean, his design style, his line quality, his the types of forms and shapes and how he uses color all fall into a very, very common theme, right? He has very graphic style to him. He has a very... You know, even his, whether it be his anatomy or if he's doing like kind of like tech or he's doing mech or something like that, everything falls into a very, very refined and very simplistic graphic style. Um, very dynamic shapes, a lot of exaggeration. Beautiful, beautiful. He's come a long way since I last saw his work. You know, look at Bobby Chu's work. You know, what kind of characters does he create? Well, he creates very. It's yes, he does cute creatures very often, but it's always kind of borders. You know, it always sits on the border of cute and creepy, right? That's Bobby Chu's thing. So look at how he plays with forms and shapes, you know, and look at how that translates into the types of colors that he picks, right? Um, all of these artists have very, a very, very uh, distinguishable art style, and you could call it a very distinguishable distinguishable brand because a lot of my friends have been bringing up the word branding lately so it's kind of in my head you might hear my little girl coughing right now too but for no thought thou not i just went and checked her out and she's doing okay she's my kids have had a, the same cough for the last month now i've taken them to the doctor twice and it's just faro i said just let them wait it out <laughs> but it's hard to hear them coughing and stuff like that um but anyways um in any case um they're okay now. Uh, as you can see, I moved on to ridicule, and uh, uh, with him, what I felt he needed was uh, I needed to basically push the design that I'd already started with. Um, I already very much liked the direction he was going in, and I just wanted to push it, clean it up, refine it, um, and accentuate certain areas where I wanted, to, where I felt it needed a little bit of, of uh, a little bit of. You know, just I needed to push my design a little bit further. So as you can see, the I wanted to accentuate the fact that the area of his gut that had been torn open was between his rib cage and his groin, essentially. So I'm going to be really pushing that to help create a stronger tension, a stronger push and pull, a stronger feeling of tearing. And at a certain point, you're going to see that I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually going to. Uh, 
experiment with adding uh, his rib, uh, his uh, spinal cord. You can actually see a spinal cord through the middle, because uh, I was thinking it might make a little bit more sense, because it's kind of the thing holding up, holding him up. But then I realized it kind of, well, it kind of interfered with the narrative at that point. It was creating a barrier between, you know, it was it was blocking the hollowness, the, the emptiness of his gut, which kind of killed the narrative. And when I just looked at it visually, it just looked like I was just overkilling it. It was it was information that didn't need to be there, so I took it out. But I thought it would be cool, so I played around with it a little bit. Also, if you notice here, that I'm I want to uh, make that tear in his body. Uh, I wanted to make that tear in his body a little bit more pronounced, you know. So it's kind of like a, his flesh had originally torn, but then it was as the years, you know, as years pass, that the fabric of his skin gets weaker and weaker, and it just kind of starts to, you know, just to come apart, you know, like very, very old fabric type of thing, you know. Here you can see um, I'm actually painting in the spinal cord, uh, and yes, to answer your question, if you if you were interested to know. Yes, I did use image reference. I looked up spinal cord and how it connected to the hip cage and where it was placed inside the body, just so I, was, I made sure I was doing it right. And it was important to um, analyze the front, the the front part of the, the spinal cord, because very often you're looking up a spinal cord, you might get reference from the back, right? You're not going to get that reference from the front end of the spinal cord. So this just uh, you know, there it's slightly different in terms of form. There's there's structures in the in the rear of the spinal cord that are different from the front. It's a little bit more rounded, but as you can see here, it gives you a very strong idea of how these discs are kind of connected together, right? And all of the using that kind of reference is what makes it a little bit more believable. It only takes two minutes out of your out of your time, but you're creating something that has more credibility as a as a piece of artwork, right? But I place it in, and I'm kind of sitting there and you know, trying to adjust it and put it in the right place. And I'm sitting there looking at it going, I don't know. The only, the other, it just wasn't, it wasn't singing for me, right? And the other thing that I found was a little bit awkward is that it was actually creating a bit of a tension with his dick, right? <laughs> so it was kind of almost suggesting that this, there was this line traveling through his back and out of his groin. And I'm just sitting there going, that just looks weird. You know, it just looked a bit off. So I said, no, screw it. I'm just going to take it out and keep that opening there um, and you can see right here at this point um, because I have to emphasize the fact that he's kind of got these prongs these kind of like fork like spike prongs that are pulling down on his on his lower abdomen I wanted to accentuate that so to accentuate the the, the strain the pull you'll notice that I'm creating some very strong straight lines a straight line is a very powerful tool to creating a sense of tension right like almost like a uh, like pulling on a web or pulling on cords, right? It creates this strong straight line tension, and that's what helps to that's what's going to help emphasize the hum, the weight that's sitting that's pulling on his groin to make it feel that much more painful, right? And the pain that he's the pain that he's feeling in his body juxtaposed against the look of laughter in his face is a very uncomfortable contrast there's there's it's it's off it's wrong and that's what kind of i felt by accentuating this pull in his stomach and accentuating this this tear through his flesh with with the expression that's where i really fi feel i captured that really dark and disturbing um the very dark and disturbing aspect of his personality you know it, you know just on the surface here you, you're kind of grazing it you're kind of feeling it but by feeling that pain and then feeling that that humiliation in his face you're really really experiencing this character and that's really what i was after right i was really after that you notice in the earlier part too i said i was i decided to take those prongs up because it created a sense of tension and i took them out um i decided to put them back in um just because it kind of justified the, the that structure that's gripping onto his rib cage pulling up yeah, I found it added a little bit more tension, and on second thought, I thought, you know what, it does need something there. There's a little bit too much of a of a smooth shape coming down the side of his neck and shoulders, so I wanted to kind of break that line with something, something. You know, don't let the eyes relax in a certain area. Let that, let there be pain wherever wherever that pain is released, right? And as far as his graphic line is concerned. I put a lot of emphasis on that downward horizontal pull, 
right? So you, you can imagine if you were to think of a line of action, it would be a line of action that pulls straight down through his body and goes right down as a curve, right down to the bottom of his, right down to the to the weight at the end of his member, right? So that's it for this tutorial. Part six is going to be coming soon. Uh, it's already produced. I've just got to record it. So remember, go to adamduff.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't worry, I'm not going to spam you. And I'm going to be adding content regularly and get it on the chat. You're going to see as soon as you go on the on the uh, tutorials page and you click on the demons link, uh, there's going to be a button right at the top that'll send you right down to the forums. It's on the same page, but just to make sure you find it. And don't forget to share your, your feedback and ideas. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care.